Anytime you see the dire wolves, you get fired yeah, up. Yeah, dire wolves are awesome. They, they are, really are. They're the amazing. Yeah, this is why spirit animals are so important, you guys. <laughs> Hey guys, Lexi here, and welcome to the Game of Thrones Season 7, Episode 2, Stormborn Recap. I'm so excited to welcome Corey Geard of the San Francisco Giants. And of course, you know the one of my life, Hunter. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me on. Anytime, um, you know you're always welcome. Let's get Lexi. I, I, I actually owe it to you guys. Hunter, huge getting me into Game of Thrones. You guys had me over to watch the premiere for season six. Oh, that's that right, and party. you, yes. and then you didn't even, you were like, what is even happening? Yeah, I got thrown right into the middle of this <laughs> entire thing. I watched the premiere for season six. I had no clue what was going on, but I loved it. So then I started all over again, and my wife and I started from season one. Arya, for sure, is my favorite. Yeah. Like, at first, I don't think she was, and then her progression, I kind of was like, this is brutal, what is happening, but now she's epic. She's for sure my favorite. For me, this scene was so powerful because it's so rare that you find four strong women around a, a war table, right? Talking war, talking strategy. What are they going to do? What are the alliances? Like, these four women are in charge. For me, that was like an awesome scene to see. What are your guys' thoughts? Uh, seeing all those houses and having just that opportunity, like they're talking battle and how they're gonna, you know, conquer Westeros. I really liked, uh, you know, the whole thing where she starts kind of calling him out on a lot of the stuff that he's done. But to me, the biggest thing is, you know, she's like, if I fail the people, come to me and tell me. The leader has to be for the people. So I thought that that whole scene was, was, I mean, it was cool. You see like these badass women just up there around the table kind of calling the shots. I think we really enjoy seeing in the show and just in the world in general. Right now, like with Jon Snow on the road, every powerful position in Westeros is like, world, oh my world. Like, who runs the world? Who runs the world? That's true. That's true. That is true. That's a great point. You know, all these kind of plans are great and all, but you got here by being who you are. Continue to be who you are. I think it's great advice within the show. I really hope she does hold strong to that because some of the best parts of Game of Thrones have been where it's Daenerys being Daenerys, like just wreck and shop, not listening to other people tell her what she's gonna do or what she needs to do. Especially because that, and I love that one line that Lisi had when Aerys, the Master of Whispers, was like, you backed the wrong king. And then she said to him, like, will we pardon those who have done that as well in the past? And like, yeah. him or whatever? That whole thing was so amazing. She burned that Ver I know, daughter. Like, I can't forgive her. I don't like to see her ever. Yeah, that was sad. Yeah. Everything that was going on with her and Bran, I think it was like total evil side. So, I don't yeah. like her and Khaleesi. I don't like her being anywhere near Khaleesi. Yeah, that's fair. I don't like it. That's all. <laughs> Get lost. And now to the next scene, which was one of my favorite but really awkward scenes, but super excited these two finally got together. <laughs> Grey Worm in Missande. Like, how, every time the sex scenes come on, Alexis is like this. This is your pure eyes. You know, you know, you I love you, boo. Let's do it. In whatever mm -hmm. capacity that we can do it. Yeah, what do you got on that? How did you feel you know? about this? Yeah, well, that, that was the thing. I think at first everyone's like, all right, like, Woo! fine. Like, yeah. You like that moment where it's like both sides kind of finally come to the point where you're like, you know what? I think the, the more juicy part of this is what <laughs> Grey Worm said to her. He's like, you, you know, I never had fear before you. So basically, he, he used the word fear for like, now he has love. Like, yeah. if you have nothing, if you don't have love, you have no fear, because like, what does it matter if you're just like empty? Yeah. Cut to the Citadel. We have so much happening over there. Um, so much gross stuff happening. So really. poor Samuel Harley. He is just, <laughs> this season is not a good season for him. But I feel like he's doing the like coolest stuff he's ever done. He's literally doing the grunt work. He's, he's becoming a G. Yeah, he is. Becoming, he is a G. He's always been a G. We I see him so. peeling off the grayscale, right? Cutting it off. It was disgusting. It was an awesome scene though. Like, so then he has to do... Um, Determination. Then he needs the dragon glass to finish the treatment. So that's going to be interesting to get him because he has to go back to Dragonstone, which is that's where Khaleesi is. I actually am a big fan of the Archmaester that he keeps working with. Oh, you are? You like it? I think he's such a cool character. I, yeah. I Maybe because he's from Harry Potter also. It's like oh. something that Harry Potter love. And then Sansa's there with Lord Baelish and like... Or is Lord Baelish going to get in the way? Like... 
Oh, he's, he's gonna do out. something. You can tell that they're gonna have been like. I feel like terrible. It's just, yeah, they're just building him up for manipulation and conniving and. Yeah. And I think what's what they say is like kind of another big deal about it is that Ned Stark in the first season choked him out in the same way. And then, uh, like, whenever you talk about it. They had that yeah. scene with Jon Snow in this episode where he kind of, like, threatens him right there. And it, it seems like. Him. Yeah, and it almost seems like that's what he wanted somehow. Like, his reaction to it wasn't that negative or scared or anything. Yeah, like it that. felt. It kind of weird. It felt like that, was, that whole scene was annoying to me. I mean, I know they had to show it, but, like, like come on, Jon. Like, he did kind of help you in battle. Like, you don't need to, like, choke him out. You guys, look, don't touch my sister. Thank you for helping me. But apparently, <laughs> listen. <laughs> apparently, he has to choke him out. To tell him that. Hot Pie tells Arya, "Hey, your brother's the king of the North now," and she's like, "Wait, what?" That was like a stand up and applaud scene when the crossroads go to King's Landing, head back home. Yeah. But now the opportunity for her to be back with like Snow and, and Sansa, that was like a. Game changing moment. So now Arya, when she finds her direwolf, Nigeria, uh, and she looks at it and is like, come on, come back with me, you know? And Nigeria's like, nah, girl, I'm cool, less dangerous than me in the wild. <laughs> and she's like, no, and then Arya says, that's not you. Yeah. So that's so also first, a call back to season one. Yeah, when I was first watching, I thought she was saying, that's not Nigeria. Yeah. But obviously, go ahead. Yeah, so obviously saying, you know, I get it, even for living in the wild, I do too. Yeah. Which I think was really powerful. Yeah, similar spirits. It was, it was such a cool moment when, at first I didn't know what was going on. You know, the yeah. wolves were coming around, like, what can be? And then, yeah, my Miria shows up, and you feel like there's going to be this, like, joining of forces and, like, everything going. But, you know, it's true to who Arya is and the whole theme of the show. You know, I think there's, you know, even referring to the, you know, you're a dragon, be a dragon, like, uh, this is kind of that scene for her where it's, you know, she is wild, right? You know? And so for her, like, she has to continue being who she is, and I mean, it's kind of a reflection of that. Oh, let's talk about Cersei's catapult to kill dragons. Cersei has like this mad scientist that like finds ways to destroy everything, but I just I feel like she's like a villain that like she has some style. That's why you just can't underestimate Cersei. Like, it's gonna be a part of something. You, you knew right away. I did wish that they'd have shown more of like the large scale battle. It was all kind of like close quarter. It kind of happened fast, it was crazy. Oh my god, that massive ladder just falling down. I was like, this is nuts! Like, right? Like, yeah, he it, just comes coming off of that with his axe. You're like, this guy means business. And you really only saw this happening kind of right around that one fight. Um, but that was so I would have liked to see more of it, but this, the whole scene in general was just epic. The impact hit, which, by the way, I was spoiled on because you know, the two girls oh, are kissing. Oh, God. Alexis is like, ah, and then all of a sudden I hear something. I'm like, what happened? And as soon as that happened, Alexis is like, she's like, no! Like, we all know what's gonna happen. We're like, ah, come on! And, because, yeah, it was just, it was a it was a priceless moment that once again got to but it's kind of creepy. And then when, you know, uh, Theon, or he has, Euron has Yara in that hole, right? And then Theon's there, and he can make a choice whether to save Yara or he's out. What do you guys think of his decision? You just saw it coming. I, I feel like when he was standing there and they started to pan around and just knew he was gonna let you down. Super disappointing, but I have to hope that they let him come through at some point, that he has like a big role to play. There's a reason why he's jumped off, right? Like you said, like we're probably gonna see him at some point. I definitely didn't think about what y'all, all the things y'all just said that like, oh, maybe Theon will come back at some other point. I was kind of like, all right, Theon, just don't go away. Like, please yeah. like, leave the, the Game of Thrones room. <laughs> I think back to Theon and like Jon Snow and like early and how like, yeah. I hope they can get back to that. I know there's a ton of drama that's happened since those days, but you have to hope that, you know, in that whole storyline, that he can kind of overcome all the stuff up to some massive stuff. And everything's coming um, together. You know, this last episode went by so fast to me. I feel like, I wanted more at the end of it. Um, no, I hate so. seeing the end credit. I'm like, no! Yeah, come on, really? That's it? <sighs> um, but yeah, super excited about the next couple episodes. I think they're going to be huge, and this was a solid one. All right, well, there you have it, your Game of Thrones recap. Thank you guys for watching. Big thank you to Corey for being here. And if you guys like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. Bye!
guys liked this video, go ahead and hit that like button. Also, let me know in the comments below what was your favorite moment of episode two. Also, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please be sure to do so because we post videos here every single week. And I'll see you in the chat. Bye!